Hello, I'm with St. Agnes. Uh, first of all, thank you for accompanying me this interview. My first question will be, you opened today Elfest on the main stage. How did it go? Amazing. It could not have gone better. We had no idea what to expect playing that early in the morning. Um, but we put together a set that we really were kind of challenging ourselves. We opened with a new song. We included loads of visuals, which we've never done before. And it went perfectly and the audience couldn't have been more receptive. It was amazing. Um, the audience were lovely. It was really busy. Perfect. Perfect show. Yeah. Um, are you or your music impacted by the place you have to play at or could you play anywhere you ask to? I think we used to kind of change our set a little bit depending on the event that we are playing but we've, we don't really do that anymore. We just... We just are who we are, and we're going to do what we're going to do. And sometimes it's totally appropriate, and sometimes it's really inappropriate. But we just enjoy that now. Like we just we want to we play music for ourselves, really. You know, this is this is music is our passion and our art, and so we just make something that we really love, and then just go out and do it. Um, let's talk about Blood Soccer. How did your writing process went like? Um, so it was written at a really difficult time for me. So my mum passed away, and um, we made the record. Um, we started making it just a few weeks after it all happened. Um, so it was really difficult. Um, I was in a very bad place mentally, obviously, and it was a case of, oh, I'm feeling strong enough today to record some vocals, or I think I've got one vocal performance in me, and then I'm done. So it was it was very difficult. Um, Yeah, <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> and you know, musically writing that one, like Andy and I had the responsibility of making sure that the music that we were performing matched the quality of Kitty's honesty in her lyrics and kind of honoring the, the uh, depth of emotion that she was willing to explore uh, lyrically. Um, why did you choose to call it that way, Blood Sucker? Some, one of the themes on the album was to do with um, to do with people in your life that take a lot of energy from you. You know, there's there some sometimes it's a family member or people you work with or friends or um, those those people they take energy from you, make life harder, and they're really fucking annoying and they're really painful and they make life awful sometimes and. Sometimes it can just be a dickhead at work and other times it can be someone in your family who's awful and really causing serious problems and we just called them bloodsuckers, you know, they're, they're taking your energy um, and your essence and so the song Bloodsuckers is like a fuck you to those people. I mean, loads of the album is a fuck you to those people um, and so whilst Kitty was writing from a place of grief that manifested Kitty has a tendency to turn a lot of emotions into anger and so the grief became anger and that's what we did with Bloodsuckers. Because mm. uh, since the name is Vampire Reference, do you feel inspired by other gothic arts in your lyrics? Of course, like the vampiric element has always been part of what we've done as a band. You know, from the Family Strange EP and then the Vampire EP, um, we've always associated with the vampiric idea of being outsiders existing in a way that isn't the norm um, and so bloodsuckers felt like the perfect way to kind of vampirically describe this very real emotion and uh, your singing in the album is quite brutal um, do you have to prepare yourself in a certain way Yeah, it's brutal because I was in, I was so unhappy and um, so I would just go into the studio and just emote and what came out is what ended up on the record. There was very little editing, very little, um, you know, I didn't do multiple takes. It was like one take, right, that's it, we've got it. Or, or that's all I could manage. So we, it might not be like technically the perfect take but we were just like this is all Kitty can do right now so this is what's going to be on the record um, so yeah it, it wasn't intentional that it's that brutal but I think it's just a reflection of how I was feeling at the time 
uh, you come from London and you played in many different countries. Is the London is metal scene is different from the others? Um, I think we're quite spoiled in London for uh, bands and music. Um, so I think it's you have to be really, really good to impress people. And I think that right from the beginning has made us up our game always, you know, work really hard to put on a really good live show. Because in London, you just you just have to, because like, people will just stand with their arms crossed, judging, being very judgmental. <laughs> so you have to be like, fucking great. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I really like the clip, uh, Outsider, who directed? Uh, the video? Yeah. Uh, us, yeah. So we, we directed it all, yeah. Uh, can you speak about his conception? Yeah, so Outsider is just, I think all of us in our own ways feel, um, I think actually, I think a lot of people in bands feel like outsiders and that's why they form bands, because it's your own little gang, your own little crew, your family, chosen family. Um, and that's what the song's about. It's about saying like, come, there's a world here for you. If you feel like an outsider, if you feel you don't fit in, there's a world here for you, specifically for you. Like we're welcoming you with open arms. That's that's what the song's about. And we wanted that we wanted that video to have a look of kind of like a school prom band, um, and so that's why the whole thing's kind of pink and like nice. Was that there was like a welcoming place for the. A lot of these feelings start at school, right? The feelings of being other and the outsider start when you're a teenager. And a prom is like, you know, in the movies and stuff, it's often the place where it all, for, for like the losers, that they don't get to go or it all goes wrong. And that's why we wanted the video to feel like a, like a prom. And um, what was the hardest song to make on your album? Um, the hardest one to sing was This Is Not The End because um, that is directly about uh, my grief for my mother and how I, how I felt um, and I had to do it by myself. I couldn't um, have other people in the room. I sang it once by myself um, and I just made it, started crying at the end but just made it through. So that was the hardest for me. How about you? Uh they're all pretty hard really because it was the most uh, kind of like energetic stuff we'd done really like from a drum point of view I remember like you doing the this at the end and we were sat downstairs and you're like alright oh, going up to do this uh, yeah I remember you came down and it, it was like uh, yeah you came down and was you just went oh. I remember sat down on the couch and was like right I think that's done we didn't even go and listen to it to begin with I don't think no. Uh, do you prefer to play uh, on festivals or smaller gigs? I don't think I prefer either. I think it's just each one is its own thing. You know, that's kind of like saying choose between like different chocolate bars or something. You know, they're all good. Like maybe one day you prefer a different one. But if we're getting to play live in front of people that are paying attention, we'll play anywhere anytime festivals are unique because you don't have a sound check you just go on you know like I don't know how much people know about what it's like but the lack of preparation of a festival is kind of crazy there's a lot of faith in just the crew that everything's just gonna work um, and you just go on and you just hope everything's gonna happen and there is a real adrenaline to that I think that you're Maybe if you're a really big band, it's different, but for a band of our size, you're kind of reduced to your essence of what the spirit of the band, do you have it in you to just carry your energy through no matter what happens? Whereas when you're doing a headline, smaller indoor show or something, you have more time to kind of like make it your own and you approach it in a slightly different way. And that has its own pleasure as well because you get to be more creative with how the lights are gonna be or how things are gonna look. and everything and it has its own adrenaline buzz but I love we love them all so many thanks for this interview uh, can you tell us your last words for all listeners and your fans uh, I don't know <laughs> my mind's gone like thank you for being a fan um, yeah can you think of anything <laughs> hey we got some new stuff coming out in the autumn Okay. Um, so like September time so keep your eyes and ears open and peeled
And uh, we, just as a band, we're not the world's most active social media users, but we love hearing from people. Yeah. We might not put tons out there, but it's just because, I don't know, we're, we don't live on our phones particularly, but we love hearing from people after the shows. And I, it's always great when people have really responded to a song that we've played and they've had like an emotional kind of moment and everything sharing those things with us like makes the whole thing really worthwhile so don't be shy about reaching out to us